Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about Kubernetes pod, replica set and deployment. We'll see how do we create pod, replica set and the deployment. In our previous videos, we have discussed the architectural components of Kubernetes. So if you are not certain about that, I highly recommend to watch my videos. We know that in Kubernetes, we would have one or more nodes. So by default, you would have at least one worker node and one master node. Master node is the node which controls your worker node operations. So in your worker node, you have the pod. You can have multiple pods created. So if you are using the Azure Kubernetes instance, then you can define the limit how many number of pods you can create within one node. And within the pod, you can create one or more instances of your container application. So pod is nothing but the instance in which your containers are going to run or you can say pod is an instance wherein your application is going to run. In theory, you can, you, it is possible to deploy multiple instances of container within the single pod, but it's not recommended until unless you have specific requirement for that. So it is always recommend to create one container instance in a one pod. Now let's see how do we create. So this is my Azure Kubernetes instance. I'm going to use this instance for our demonstration. I'll connect to the Kubernetes instance, the command line. qctl get config get context let's verify how many instances are running qctl get all i'm just running two services no ports are available so let's create a pod for this i'm going to jump into my visual studio code so this is what the YAML file looks like for creating a pod. So if you are using a Visual Studio Code and if you have the Kubernetes extension installed, which looks like this, then you can basically create a pod, let's say pod.yaml, I'll create another file and then type in pod. As I'm using this Kubernetes extension, I'm getting the intelligence to create different services like pod. So if I press enter, then the, the complete template is automatically created for me. I can just change the couple of variables like let's say let's call this as an nginx. And name as well. I'll just remove this thing which is not needed. This is how your pod template looks like. Let's make it bigger. Now you can deploy the template using the command qctl apply dash f and then the name of your template. And then you can verify kubectl get all. As we can see that we have the Kubernetes pod created. You can watch this kubectl describe pod. So that will describe the pods and its events so you can see that we have the pod created in the default namespace this is the name of the this is the label available this is the image name it has downloaded the latest docker image so you can see that the nginx web server is running we have the service already created which is attached which is looking for the pod which has a label as an nginx 
you can get the logs of this pod using the kubectl get kubectl logs and then nginx so this is how the logs look like to delete the pod you can run kubectl delete pod so let me recreate again you can also use kubectl delete delete with an f and then run the pod so that will delete the deployment so both the command works as is either you can run delete pod command or run delete command with providing the file as in pod kubectl get all just to verify the pod is deleted you can see that the pod is deleted now if i'm going to run the nginx web server that should fail basically now you have seen that we have created a pod and pod was attached to the service we were able to access the application which was hosted let's say on the nginx server it was doing well now unfortunately our pod has deleted and what happens if that application goes down we don't have the availability or the consistency of uh, our application availability and which is not we want in production because we would like to have the high availability as much as possible and that's where the replica set comes into the picture so what a replica set gives us basically it gives the ability to deploy the given number of instance at any point of time so for example with the help of replica set you can specify these are the number of minimum number of instances i would like to host inside the container inside the uh, kubernetes instance so even though if the pod is going to be deleted you would have the those the minimum number of specified container instance running at the given point of time let's see how it works in the demonstration so i'll create a replica set so this is how the replica set template looks like you know kind we are specifying as a replica set then the name of our replica set and label here we are looking for the this all the pod which has the label is an nginx so it is uh, running the match label and here in the replicas how many number of replicas we would like to run for our pods for our containers and then last we we need to specify the container image within the container specification under this particular template so now let's run this again run kubectl apply F and then replica set. So now if I run kubectl get all, that should have the pod as well as replica set created. Now you can see that we have two instances of Nginx web server running here, and we have the services which is and we have the replica set which is created which has the desired state of 2 current state of 2 and radius and 2 so now even though if i'm going to delete the one of the pod let's say kubectl delete pod and then for example if i'm going to delete this so pod is deleted and you can see that even after deleting the pod replica set has made sure that make sure that the new number of instances is always available so it has created immediately it has created a new replica set instance it has created a new nginx instance now this was about the replica set next one we have is the deployment now the, with the help of replica set we are always making sure that we 
match the desired state consistency at the given point of time. So whatever we specified, we need these many number of instances to be created. Then we can always go ahead and achieve those number of instances with the help of a replica set. Why do we, in this case, if, if that's the case, then why do we need the deployment? The reason for having the deployment is, having the need of the deployment is, let's say if you would like to upgrade your Nginx version from, let's say, current version, which is 16 to, let's say, 116 to 119, for example, in that case, what you need to do is you need to recreate your all your ports. Uh, you need to update uh, the version in the your replica set deployment, and that will recreate the deployment, and that will basically have some amount of downtime. Whereas if you go to the deployment, so the way deployment works in deployment, you can specify these are the number of instances I have within my specified in my replica set and when i would like to roll out a new version of my docker container then i can define the rollout strategy that these are this is my rollout strategy i would like to have at least one instance of my application available at given point of time so or i can specify the percentage here and then when the deployment happens basically it will create the new instances and then delete the old one so it makes the consistency even though you are upgrading it to a new version so here you can say app is an nginx image again is an nginx And then you can deploy this with the help of kubectl apply uh, and deploy. So now if I run kubectl get all. Now if you have observed carefully, earlier we used to have three instances of nginx controller, two instances of nginx cont um, controller but now we have one instance of nginx controller because when we were deploying it through the replica set in that case we have mentioned the replica set count as in two that's why it was count as two but when we you know applied through the deployment by default the replica set count has maintained as in one so like you can specify here as in replicas number of replicas for example if i can specify four and then if I run the cube so it will deploy again then basically it will create another four three instances here you can see that it is creating three more instances I'll just clear this just to so one is created 80 seconds ago and then these three we are creating now and you can see that it's still running. I hope this was helpful. That's what I wanted to show you in this particular video. So just to recap, we have discussed about the pods. We have deployed the pods with the help of YAML deployment. We have seen the logs of the pod. We have also discussed how to use the deployment with the help of replica set. And then finally we discussed about the deployment through the deployment.yaml file. I hope you like the video. Please share it with your friends, colleagues, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching it. See you in the next video.